Good evening, guys, and welcome to a very cold, snowy night here in New York City. Um, I was shooting pretty much all day today, uh, and then I got home, I was tired, but it started to snow, and I figured I had to come out and shoot some more. It's a beautiful night for it, um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk around New York City, starting here in Chinatown. We're gonna take some pictures in the snow. Hopefully it continues to snow. Um, I'm also gonna talk about some tips for shooting at night. So for those of you that wanna get into night photography, but are finding it a little bit difficult uh, setting up your camera and all that good stuff. We're gonna be talking about that tonight as well. Um, but we're just gonna be exploring, kind of seeing what we can find and uh, chatting about night photography along the way. Now, for those of you wondering, this is all shot on the new DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Um, I just got it and I'm loving it so far. And I have it mounted to a little clip on my chest so I can do these FPV style videos um, and I can talk to you right into the camera. So hopefully the audio sounds good as well. Uh, but I wanna start off by talking about what I'm looking for out here first and foremost. I mean, shooting at night is complicated because obviously there's no sun, which is usually our main light source when we're out taking photos. But shooting at night allows us to shoot with artificial light, all these lights that we see around us here. And that introduces a much different scene than what we're used to. And it presents some scenarios where the light is kind of bending and shaping in all these different ways. And it's coming from all these different sources and they're kind of clashing into each other. And some colors really pop while others, other colors just die off into the dark shadows. Um, so it leads to some really interesting shooting opportunities. And the first thing we need to look for is of course these artificial light sources. And that's exactly why I came here to Chinatown where these artificial light sources are absolutely everywhere and it looks beautiful. All these different signs, the light posts, um, and the snow adds a really dramatic element to it as well. Thank you. <laughs> what a nice guy. Just stopped his car for me. What a legend. Oh, we have a person coming. That's fantastic. Okay, that's pretty cool. I really like these old storefronts here. I think they just look so cool with the light kind of falling off into the sides. I'm starting to get a really nice dusting out here. Look at this, it's so pretty. Now, of course, high school me would definitely draw something in that, and I'm gonna let you guess as to what I would draw, but I'm turning 32 on Friday. <laughs> so I'm gonna be the uh, mature adult that I am, and I'm not gonna draw that thing onto that car hood. I'll let you use your imagination. I really like this, this storefront here it looks pretty cool i love shooting with this lens i'm shooting with a 35 f 1.4 and i've been shooting with a 35 for years one of the reasons why this lens is so good tonight is because it has a maximum aperture of f 1.4 and that's extremely useful for shooting at night because it's dark and a wider aperture which is a lower number means more light is going to enter our camera through that little hole in your lens. So shooting with a, a prime lens like I am now makes it a lot easier to shoot at night, especially if you're not using one of these, a tripod, which I begrudgingly took out with me tonight <laughs> because I know that there's gonna be some scenes that I come across tonight that I would really love to shoot at f5.6 or at f8. Um, and without a tripod, there's just no way I could do that. And that's because when you're using a tripod, you can set your shutter speed to pretty much whatever you want. You can take a five, 10, 20 second exposure and your photo will still be nice and sharp. Whereas if you're hand holding, you can really only slow your shutter speed down to about 1 60th of a second before you get camera shake in your images. And it just doesn't look that good. So <clears throat> shooting with the tripod allows us a lot more flexibility when shooting at night and that's why they are and forever will be a necessary evil. Now, one thing I'm doing when I'm shooting out here is I'm definitely exposing for the highlights. I don't mind my shadows to be crushed into black. Uh, for me, I just wanna make sure I'm getting my highlights nice and exposed. And if I'm doing that, 
then that's okay. I kind of like it when you're shooting at night and the shadows just slowly drift off into nothing. I think it looks really cool. Now I'm looking for this street. There's a street that kind of curves uh, here in Chinatown and there's not many streets in Manhattan that curve. Maybe a handful. The whole city is built on a grid, but here in the downtown district, there are a few streets that that curve and it looks pretty cool. So there's a, I think it's over here and um, I think it might be pretty cool to shoot at night. So I'm just trying to make my way over there and try and find that. I think I see it, it's across the street. Ooh, that's cool. All right. Ooh, that's really cool. Just wish it was a bit closer. It's like so bright. Cheeky little crop. I think it'll look okay. All right, we found the, uh, the curved street and it looks pretty awesome, not gonna lie. I gotta say, my body's warm, but my hands are not. So this curve right here, apparently there used to be all these gang wars and uh, because the street was curved, a lot of people got shot because they could hide behind the curve. Kind of an interesting place and it's desolate, which is honestly really cool. I wanna shoot this scene in a few different ways. There's so much going on here. So I'm gonna bust out the handy tripod and play around with some slow shutter speeds here and some uh, small apertures. All right, let's get the two seconds off timer on. I'm shooting at F 5.6, one eighth of a second. And I'm shooting at 500 ISO because I think this camera just handles really well at 500 ISO. I don't feel like I need to go much slower than that, but I wonder how this will, this will look if I do go slower. Oh, look at this up here. I like how these, these lights look up top here. I like to usually, you know, if I find something cool, I'll spend a little time just hanging out and evaluating it and, and looking for, for different angles. And there's definitely some cool stuff here. Um, well, you know what, this tuxedo sign is really cool. Go faster shutter speed, capture that, that snow in motion. So I'm actually glad I just shot this at F1.4 because there's snow in the foreground that's super blurry. Oh, it looks so cool. I, I like this photo. I need to shoot this uh, vertical orientation as well. So I'm gonna take this off my tripod and... So I decided to put away the tripod. And the reason for that is because I just took that photo of the tuxedo sign and I shot it at F1.4. And I really liked how out of focus um, and how shallow the depth of field is with the snow. So because the snow is snowing everywhere, it's snowing in the foreground. And that means the snow in the foreground is gonna look nice and blurry and out of focus when you shoot it at a wide aperture like F1.4. So I think that photo is really cool. Probably one of my favorite photos of the night. Uh, and we're only just getting started. Really want a person to walk into this light right here. Oop, someone's coming, someone's coming. Got it, it was a couple. They came through. The couple came in clutch. So we're entering the neighborhood of Tribeca now. And the reason why I walked over here is I felt like I needed a change from Chinatown just hustling, bustling still. Not really, <laughs> it's pretty quiet. But I, uh, I wanted to shoot some different architecture. I'm just not really sure if I'm gonna find some light here. It's pretty, pretty dark and I've already had to raise my ISO quite a bit. Uh, it's about 11 p.m. now, but hopefully there's some residual light lurking around. Now, one of the reasons why I came here was for this, this really cool tower. There's a person.
That was a dope shot. This sky bridge is really cool. Usually I wouldn't shoot with the light source in my scene like this, but you can see the snow kind of falling down onto it, which looks really cool. I like that. Hey guys, so I am back in Thailand now and watching over this footage, I realized there's a few things that I didn't say that I would like to talk about in regards to night photography. The first of which being shooting in the snow, I realized very quickly that using a faster shutter speed just looked so much better um, because it captured that snow in motion. And I did bring my tripod out and I shot those photos on that curvy street at night. But looking back, I really liked the images that I shot at faster shutter speeds and lower apertures because it froze that snow uh, in the sky, and that's a good pun, um, but it really brought out that, that snow in the sky. I think it looked so much better than when I was using a slower shutter speed. So going off of that, I wanna talk about how you can set up your camera for night photography because I didn't mention that too much while I was out shooting, and I wanna give you a more detailed kind of breakdown of how to choose each one of your camera settings while you're out shooting at night. And as I'm talking about this, I will play some more footage over the top because I still shot a lot that night and I wanna show you guys some more of those images. Now shooting at night is basically manual mode on hard mode because there's so little light to capture, we need to make sure that all of our camera settings are nice and balanced to capture everything in the way that we wanna capture it. So we're really pushing our camera to the limits when we're shooting at night, but it's not that hard once you grasp a few of the basic principles. So the first setting that you want to adjust when you're shooting at night is your aperture. And I just recommend opening that up as wide as you possibly can. So earlier in the video, I talked about how shooting with a 35 millimeter F1.4 is great for shooting at night because it has that maximum aperture of F1.4, which is a really wide opening in the lens. And that allows a lot of light into the lens. Now, if you're shooting with a lens that has a maximum aperture of F4, go with that. If it's 2.8, go with that. If it's F2, go with that. Basically the widest aperture that your camera can open to. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and adjust your shutter speed to balance out your exposure. Now, the main consideration that you need to make with shutter speed is the motion in your scene. Do you wanna freeze motion in your scene or do you wanna capture motion blur in your scene? If you wanna freeze motion, typically you're gonna use a faster shutter speed, whereas if you wanna blur motion, you use a slower shutter speed and using something like a tripod makes that much easier to do. Now, if you are hand holding your camera, I would recommend not going below 1 60th or 1 50th of a second, give or take some camera Cameras can go much slower than that if it has in-body stabilization, but 1 60th of a second is generally the slowest shutter speed that you should be using when you're shooting at night handheld. Now, if you do both of those things and it's still too dark outside, then you can raise your ISO to 400, 800, 1600 to balance out that exposure and make sure you're getting the shot. Now, I think a lot of people are really hesitant to raise their ISO. They think it's the worst thing in the world to have noise in their images, but I've shot images at 6,400 ISO and they still clean up pretty nicely, especially if you run them through the denoise AI feature in Lightroom. I think it looks great. Image quality isn't the end all be all. Most important thing, the most important thing in photography is capturing a mood, a vibe, a story in your images. So don't be afraid to raise your ISO if you need to. Um, later that night I was shooting and it was quite dark. So I did have to raise my ISO a little bit, uh, but I'm still really happy with how some of those images came out. But that's the gist of shooting at night. And of course there's more complexities involved in this. You don't always have to be shooting with the widest aperture on your camera at night, but generally speaking, that's gonna give you the best results if you are working in low light scenarios. Uh, and then making that consideration with your shutter speed. Do you wanna freeze that motion? Do you wanna blur that motion? If you do wanna blur that motion using a tripod and then raising your ISO if need be, those are the basic things that you need to know when shooting at night. And once you kind of figure that out and you find that balance between those three camera settings, you're gonna be putting yourself in a really good situation to capture some pretty cool photos at night. Now, the best way to get better at this is of course, to just go shoot at night, guys. It's fun. I captured some really, really cool photos that night in New York City, and I hope you guys enjoyed some of the images. Let me know which image was your favorite down below. I think mine had to be the shot of that sky bridge with the World Trade Center in the back and the woman walking her dog. Absolutely love that image. I wanna spend more time editing it, but I think it came out really good. But thank you guys so much for watching. New York was dope, and I have more New York videos coming soon, and I will chat with you guys in the next one.